I have been searching for a way to explain what happened in the midterm elections since the voting came in, still coming in in some places, and I think I've figured it out. I just need you to come on a little ride with me in a trip in the Outsider's time machine. <laughs> Whoa, all right. That was pretty trippy there, hey? Anyway, oh, not so bad, was it? We got, you know, conversation pits and shag carpets and everything because we've landed in 1978. Malcolm Fraser is Prime Minister of Australia and Jimmy Carter is in the White House. There's a picture of the two of them meeting in Washington that year where they discussed, quote, the world concern over the availability of energy resources. Hang on, are we really sure we went back in time? Anyway, it's 1978, so Grease is the hit movie of the year, starring another great American-Australian duo, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, while the village people are rocketing up the pop charts with fun for the whole family sing-along anthems like YMCA and Macho Man. Oh, and guess what else happened in 1978? Despite a feckless president, the aforementioned Jimmy Carter, and a dire economic situation, and an energy crisis, Republicans failed to impress in the midterm elections. There had been huge amounts of enthusiastic talk by Republicans in 1978 before the voting that they might pick up as many as 50 seats in the House. But in the end, they came away with 12. The New York Times, in its typically gloating style, said... Poll indicates Congress candidates were more extreme than voters. Gosh, they could have written that today. The New York Times are so predictable. But it wasn't just establishment lefties who said this. Michael Barone, one of the greatest political thinkers America has ever produced, and no liberal himself, said there can only one, be one reason for the poor showing in House races. Simply do not have enough good candidates. I tell you what, all this 1978 talk sounds awfully familiar to a time traveler from 2022. Remember, in 78, the Republicans had Richard Nixon and Watergate to deal with. In 2022, Republicans are dealing with Donald Trump, who is keen to run again for the presidency in two years and may announce in just a couple of days' time. The problem for Republicans is now, though, that Trump is still wildly popular within the party and still a very good chance at the presidency, particularly if the Democrats run Joe Biden again two years from now, when the man will have lost so many marbles, he'll make John Fetterman look like Albert Einstein. But Trump's getting offside, voters offside, because a couple of things. Well, first of all, many of his high-profile candidates failed to perform on election night. Dr. Oz, Herschel Walker, that's gone to a runoff. Uh, in Georgia in a couple of weeks. Though it should also be said in his defense that by one analysis, he had a 93% success rate with candidates in lower profile elections. So take that for what it's worth. But the other issue though for the Republicans now is because he has started taking bizarre shots at Republicans he sees as a threat to him, calling Ron DeSantis, who single-handedly turned purple Florida deep red, Ron DeSanctimonious, and even attacking Virginia Governor Greg Youngkin, saying, Youngkin. Now that's an interesting take. Sounds Chinese, doesn't it? In Virginia, he couldn't have won without me. Look, I gotta say, this is not helpful. And like it or not, it's gonna turn off some swing voters who are not all in on the MAGA agenda, but are still looking for an alternative to the Democrats and their miserabilism. But let's go back to 1978. At that time, Republicans were wondering, what went wrong with the voters? How could they vote against their economic interests? And look at what was going off, on, and Jimmy Carter, and yet keep voting for more. Well, it would take an ongoing energy crisis and foreign policy debacles like the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and the coup that overthrew the, Shah, overthrew the Shah of Iran, which was a world historical disaster that we still pay the price for today for Americans to turf the Democrats. By then, the worm had turned. And Ronald Reagan, governor of California, burst onto the scene with promises, promises that it was once again morning in America, ushering in the prosperity of the 1980s and setting the groundwork for the end of the Cold War. So what's the point of all this? Well, simply that history doesn't repeat, but it sure as hell rhymes. And with the right candidate, with the right optimistic message, anything can happen. Ron DeSantis, I'm looking in your direction.